The dramatic increase in global prevalence of metabolic syndrome cannot be explained by considering only environmental or only genetic factors, leading to the need to explore the possible roles of epigenetic factors. But what are epigenetic factors? Yeah, you can imagine your genome like a cooking book full of recipes for protein production. Every gene represents a different recipe. Imagine that you inherit a mix from your parents and also your grandparents' cooking books. Now, epigenetic modifications are like little notes that grandma or mom have made at a certain recipe to make it more delicious or a marker to indicate where to start first. The recipe itself thereby does not change. Scientifically spoken, the term epigenetics refers to cell-specific changes in the DNA chemistry that modify gene expression without changing the DNA sequence. As a result, cells in an organism might have very different phenotypes despite having the same genome. Epigenetics modulates and regulates gene expression through various epigenomic marks. At this mark, chemical compounds are either added or removed from DNA, or histone proteins by specific enzymes. These marks change the spatial conformation of your DNA, either making it easier to access a gene or making it more difficult. This way, gene expression can adapt to certain circumstances. A lot has been done in the field of epigenetics and metabolism in these last years, and we will now introduce you to some of the most commonly described epigenetic marks that are known to play a role in the development of the metabolic syndrome, DNA methylation and histone modification. DNA methylation is a very well-studied epigenetic mark. As most of you know, our DNA is built of four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. DNA methylation occurs at the C5 position of the cytosine ring, where a methyl group is covalently attached by DNA methyltransferases. As an example, in the context of the metabolic syndrome, we can mention that DNA methylation regulates genes involved in insulin signaling. Higher insulin receptor substrate 1 promoter methylation is linked to lower gene expression. That means that it puts a stop to gene expression and represses the gene. This phenomenon was observed in adipose tissue of obese individuals. Other classical epigenetic mechanisms are histone modifications. Histones are proteins that are found in eukaryotic cell nuclei and their main function is to provide structural support for the chromosomes. Here, not the DNA gets modified, but the proteins where the DNA is wrapped around. These modifications include acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation and ubiquitination. When these modifications are present on the proteins, the DNA is either better or less accessible and thereby gene expression is altered. Histone H3 is one of the five main histones involved in the structure of chromatin in the eukaryotic cell. In the context of the metabolic syndrome, histone H3 methylation is enriched at the promoter region of several metabolic genes in humans, including the lipoprotein lipase and the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, or PIPA gamma. Later, we are going to talk about these genes. But what has been shown in that is that histone H3 methylation leads to a reduction in the expression of those genes, which was positively correlated with body mass index and insulin resistance in patients. These modifications are quite special because they could be inherited to you and depend on what your parents or your grandparents experienced. Also, during your whole life, including your time as an embryo, you can acquire those epigenetic marks. They help you and your children to adapt to the environment. In the past 20 or so years, lots of new knowledge has been gathered regarding epigenetic factors that are passed down generations and are influenced by the environment the past generation has lived in. 
Environmental factors with epigenetic effects include behaviors, nutrition and chemicals, but also industrial pollutants. Many of them affect how transcription factors and other proteins bind to DNA. This leads to altered gene expression and that in turn affects metabolism. This sounds a bit complicated. Can you tell us a story about how this works? Of course, Asa. There is one study of children born during the Dutch winter famine. This study shows a clear link between the mother's nutrition and risk of metabolic disorders later in life. We will not go into detail of the mechanisms of epigenetics. We will explain how this might look like with the above mentioned study. In the winter of 1944 and 45, there was a period of extreme food deprivation in the Netherlands. People were starving. In the study that started in the 1990s, scientists recruited over 2,000 men and women that were born during this winter. The study was running over 24 years and brought up a lot of insights on how exposure to undernutrition during the time as a fetus or an embryo had a lifelong lasting effect on their health. The people born from starved mothers were more likely to get the metabolic syndrome, with all the connected symptoms like increased obesity, diabetes and heart disease. What's also interesting is when it comes to food choices, offspring of the starved mothers preferred more fatty food. An explanation to this phenomenon is the change in epigenetic markers during gestation. Their metabolism was imprinted to be especially good in storing nutrients to be able to withstand a hunger period again, even though later in their life they had never to fear such a period. This is only one example where epigenetics can influence the health of the offspring of people. That means that not only our genes, but also the specific marking system can influence how our metabolism reacts to nutrients. Thus saying, you are what you eat, gets a whole different meaning and also shouldn't be used lightly. In this video, we introduce you to epigenetics, which links to our environment and to our gene expression. We talk about how epigenetic factors help us to adapt and that can be affected by those factors that our parents or even grandparents experience during our time as an embryo. There is still a lot to study in this context, but for now, let's move on to some of the experimental techniques researchers use to study the metabolic syndrome in big cohorts and datasets, or to compare many different factors that can be related with genetics or epigenetics effects.